Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Hear then the parable of the sword. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who endears, indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. It's one of the things uh, motivating for uh, a priest and for catechists, and we have a catechist here today, is to have some of the people that were prepared for the sacraments uh, to be uh, coming back again and again and again. And so uh, here I see one person who received their first communion not too long ago. And so uh, every one of us uh, are invited to receive Jesus. But I just pray uh, that this is a grace uh, that we treat it in such a way that uh, when we receive Jesus, it's like it's our first communion, maybe also our last communion, because we don't know when the Lord is calling us back. And so welcome to everyone, but especially to people who might be catechists as well, or who have been catechists uh, before and uh, for our first uh, communion person uh, who received a few months ago and is here today. And uh, she doesn't drive, so that means that her mom brought her as well. <laughs> so I uh, praise the Lord for that. And so today uh, we have uh, in the first reading uh, the book of Exodus, and this is uh, the story of Moses that we have been reading in the last uh, few weeks, and we skip some parts. But today uh, we see Moses who's presenting to the people of God the commandments of God. And we actually have a statue of Moses uh, in the back on this side where he's holding the tablets of the commandments. And so as uh, I have been a priest now for 13 years, this is something I've uh, preached about probably at least 13 times. And so I'm just uh, not looking at my notes. I just want to see what the Lord wants. And so... If it is a repeat from last year's story, uh, maybe it's because I didn't fully understand it and I need to ask the Lord to help me reapply. Uh, but if it is uh, something fresh, uh, may the Lord just help us to accomplish what He's calling us uh, to embrace. And so just a few comments. Uh, one of them is uh, we heard about the children of iniquity. But then right after that, um, what Jesus says about those who, who follow is that He is showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. And so this is very interesting that we see the Lord's faithfulness in a thousand generation uh, is a long time. And so uh, I'm not too good in math, but uh, even if people live uh, only uh, 70 years or even 30, it's, it's still a thousand times 30 is 30,000 years. And so the people who were faithful to God uh, 30,000 years ago, if the age limit was 30, 
would still be listened to um, by the Lord in, in such a beautiful way. So that shows, uh, in, a thousand is a symbolic number, but it shows that uh, His love is everlasting. And then um, I just want to make a, a comment on the Sabbath today. And so this is one of the commandments here in this uh, passage that has uh, the most uh, explanation about. And so I will not uh, reread it uh, completely. Uh, I'll miss uh, one part, but uh, we heard, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. And some of you might be on vacation uh, at this time, and so you're, in a sense, fulfilling one of the commandments of the Lord, not only by having one day, but by having a period of time where you're trying to be refreshed, where you try to uh, follow some of his invitation as well. Jesus was uh, often worried for his disciples, the ones who were following him, and so uh, there is an episode in the gospel where he knew that they were tired and hungry. So he said, uh, go have lunch and, and rest and then I'll do the work. Uh, and so uh, this is in a sense what he's uh, telling us to do. I don't want to talk too much about lunch because we're at lunchtime. And so uh, this might be uh, difficult to, uh, to hear those words uh, if we are hungry. But the Lord wants to take care of us. And this hunger is obviously not only a physical hunger, but this is the spiritual hunger that we all have as human beings, whether we know it or not. And so this is why we need to go to the good source of food. And you're here today to receive uh, him in his body and blood, soul and divinity, in the um, holy sacrifice of the altar. So this is the food that helps us to keep going. Even there is uh, the last communion that we call Viaticum, that is given to the people uh, in their last days or last hours, that brings them all the way because of uh, Jesus uh, having his arms wide open uh, to open for us the gates of uh, eternity. And so, also just uh, one comment, and I will read uh, another part of what we heard about the Sabbath today. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. And so one question uh, that I was uh, asking myself is that uh, sometimes some weeks go very well, there is no problem at all, and I don't feel tired. So I don't, do I need to really rest if a week was perfect? And what I would ask uh, as the answer, which is another question, is was God tired after six days? God is never tired. And so God showed us, and this is what it says here, uh, by example, that we need to take time, set apart, consecrated means set apart for him. When we're tired, and this is easier to do, but even if we think that we're not tired, God himself was not tired and did that. And so let us pray that we might uh, respect the Sabbath. Um, maybe you can accuse priests of uh, not respecting the Sabbath on Sunday because they have uh, all kinds of masses. Uh, but this is why often in the community that I serve with and here in this diocese, uh, Monday is uh, the day of rest for the priest. And so let us just uh, all ask for the Lord to inspire us how we should take our day of rest, how we should uh, rest and uh, go to him who says, come to me all your labor and our burden and I will give you rest. And I think uh, one of the best person to rest with is Mother Mary as uh, she helps us uh, to trust more in her son Jesus and so let us uh, ask her to bring us to Jesus and uh, I will not give my homily for tomorrow yet but uh, tomorrow is Martha, Mary and Lazarus and so for us to be able to rise again like Lazarus uh, we need to have less of the uh, anxieties of the world that Martha had and we need to be more like Mary seated at the feet of Jesus. Amen.